In case you didn't know, this is podcast episode 34 of podcast 3.0. Now, when we get to podcast version 3.1, we're not going to become podcast SS. This isn't a USB. George, was it, wasn't it USB 2.0 was... Okay. Uh, random factoids for your information from my uh, blank piece of paper here for sound effect purposes. USB 2 was... It wasn't 2.0, it was just 2. I believe it was about 485 megabytes per second. And then USB 3 was uh, 4.8 or something like that gigabytes per second. Like 10 times faster. And now, now that had glitches. Like it, it had problems connecting to the motherboard and stuff. So then they did this thing that they didn't see before. USB 3 point something. They could have called it USB 4, but, well, US, USB 4. How, how would that come across, USB 4? USB 4. I mean, how, maybe that's why they changed the 3.1, and there never will be a USB version 4. There we have it. USB 4 was the US before, before there was USB 4. They, so, USB 3.1 came out, fixing the problems, and it was about what, like, 10 gigabytes per second faster than that super lightning or thunderbolt or I don't know which one. They got all these dramatic static weather electro stuff that they use in Apple. Whatever. Apple has this fast thing and USB 3.1 is faster. And so, you know, for your information, USB 3.1 is also called SS or super speed. It's the same thing. It's it's faster than the, the thunder, lightning, whatever shockwave it's called with Apple. And the the micro USB plug is reversible. And this is a big deal. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people's phones are using older generation USB stuff where the little micro plug is not reversible. All right. That, that random. Fa- well, no, I mean, li- listening back years in the future, you might. You know, that's interesting. A lot of people did not know this information. And now you do because you're listening to podcast version three. Jesse Steele, episode 34. Today, I was thinking, and I've had this come up with me uh, this week a lot. I've, I mean, maybe I'm getting old and I'm noticing this for the first time. I would normally think that, but um, how do I say this? I've been arguing with people that are actually older than me. So I don't think this is just about me getting older. It's it's something about, maybe it's just me trying to explain things, all kinds of different people. I mean, maybe it's business, maybe it's um, uh, extended, you know, friends or pseudo family or family, whatever. But I would tell someone a very strong, very convincing uh, reason, argument, not like a fighting argument, but like a reason for something, why I'm going to do this and it's not up for negotiation. And then their immediate response was, yeah, but... And then they give some little, tiny, weak, wimpy argument. And it it doesn't even compare with the argument that I gave. I mean, mean, if if I was in the other guy's shoes, I'd be like, what can I say to that? But they, okay, like, I mean, we're talking stuff like, I'm sorry, we can't go to McDonald's today. Because if you look up in the sky, you can see... That there's like a meteor falling from the sky, and according to this website, it's scheduled to land right on top of that McDonald's in five minutes and totally decimate the place. And so we can't go, I'm sorry. And the answer, then they respond, but I want French fries. And, and it's like, um, and I get this from 50 year olds. Well, 
maybe 45, not, not 50. I have friends that are 50 and I'm not getting this from 50, the 50, but it's, you know what I'm saying? Like 55, like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, did you hear what I just said? And, and I got to thinking about this this week and I've, I've had this from, from, you know, also maybe teenagers also that I've dealt with, but I've, I've had this in my mind. I'm thinking, what is, it's like, did they not hear me? And it finally occurred to me, I think a lot of people really believe that the more credible arguments, like the reasons for, the reasons against, the pros, the con, the stronger argument, the stronger reason is always the one that comes last. They don't get it that the reason, the explanation, the argument that I just gave first already debunked, I've already rebutted their reason in advance. And they don't see that. And that, of course, goes back to critical thinking. It's like, you know, don't give an argument that's already been defused, dude. Now, of course, in your own life, I hope you don't do that. You, you, you're arguing with the dean at your college. You're arguing with your boss. You're arguing with your spouse, your kids, your parents. I hope, and I, I hope that your arguments are all cordial and and humane and in good cheer. And as you hash things out and and f- have friendly discussion, but I do hope that you don't put forth arguments and reasons and explanations and proofs, as they're called, for things that the other person already diffused and proved wrong. So I've just been thinking about that. No, George, I'm not, I'm not. T- <sighs> okay, he's giving me that Harry uh, Reed Rapids look. Okay, for those of you in Reed Rapids who want to hear me say it for all the people who think that uh, you're the only ones who don't need this to be said to you, I, I don't think all teenagers are buffoons. The th- no, I, I mean, okay, I've been negotiating this week with a 50-year-old lady who's just brilliant, and it's been a delight and a pleasure uh, uh, working out some business stuff with her. So there's there's someone much older than me in the class that I just said. I'm, I'm arguing, I said, I'm arguing with people that are older than me. I've been getting along with people older than me in their 50s also this same week. I've been talking with a lot of people this week. I'm actually quite exhausted from it all. So I've had some 50-ish people giving me lots of flack and some 50-ish people just being a delight. And the same thing with teenagers. Just today, I spent maybe three hours with a 19-year-old who technically is a teenager. First year in college, I sat there and watched him sign up for his college classes on his phone, Taiwanese, while we were installing Ubuntu on his Asus computer. A year ago, we tried it. There was a hardware conflict. I told the kid, I, I mean, a, a few weeks ago, I went to his house. We tried again and we showed the errors. Pull out his camera. I said, put that in a secret link on YouTube. Go to the store, show them the YouTube video. They sent it back to the factory, came back, and it works. <laughs> There's a secret YouTube thing. It's like that hidden private link thing. They you know, never publicized, not searchable. He installed Ubuntu. It worked. He was so thrilled. The guy gives me this big, awesome hug, which I don't want to tell his personal business, but he gives me this big bear hug. He's like, dude, thanks so much. We installed Verk. I'm out of time. I've got to get to the point. Strange as it seems, try this idea on. God wants us to design galaxies in the afterlife. Preparing to design galaxies now is his solution to our problems right now. Is that pie in the sky? We don't want to keep our eyes on the sky so much that we don't keep our eyes on the ball. Then again, designing galaxies could strengthen creative thinking. Today's challenges may only be overcome creatively. Looking at the sky a little more may keep the ball from getting lost in the sun. It may not seem urgent, but a galactic perspective ain't bad. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.